Hi, and welcome to week 31 of economics. So this week, we'll be looking at some key concepts in the subject. Uh, we're going to be looking on risk. We're going to looking at risk management, financial decision making, and stock valuation. So we'll begin by looking at how investors employ various risk management techniques to mitigate potential losses and optimize returns. The diversification, for example, involves spreading investments across different asset classes to reduce exposure to any single risk. Hedging strategies, such as options and futures contracts, allow investors to protect against adverse price movements. Additionally, stop-loss orders uh, through brokerages and position sizing help investors limit losses by setting predetermined exit positions or allocating capital based on risk tolerance. Risk management is, is essential for preserving capital and achieving long-term financial goals. Uh, then we'll be describing some of the quantitative methodologies used in financial decision-making uh, techniques such as discounted cash flow analysis, net present value, and internal rate of return are commonly employed to evaluate investment opportunities. These quantitative tools assess the profitability and feasibility of projects, helping investors allocate resources efficiently. Furthermore, statistical models and economic techniques are utilized to analyze financial data, forecast market trends, and assess risk. Quantitative analysis provides valuable insights into the market behavior and informs decision-making processes. We'll then shift our focus to stock valuation, where we'll evaluate uh, some of the methods of fundamental analysis. So fundamental analysis involves examining a company's financial statements, management team, industry position, and economic outlook to determine its intrinsic value. Intrinsic value you can think of as being the real worth of a company. Key metrics such as earnings per share, price to earnings ratio, and price to book ratio are used to assess a stock's worth relative to its peers and the broader market. So by conducting thorough fundamental analysis, investors can identify undervalued or overvalued stocks and make informed investment decisions. Fundamental analysis provides a comprehensive understanding of a company's financial health and growth prospects. So next, we're going to list some key ratios used for analyzing corporate solvency. So what we're talking about here is a company's ability to pay its debts. So ratios such as the debt to equity ratio, current ratio, and interest coverage ratio are indicators of a company's ability to meet its financial obligations and manage debt. These ratios assess the company's liquidity, leverage, leverage in here being debt, and profitability, providing insights into its financial stability and risk profile. So monitoring these ratios helps us gauge the risk of default or bankruptcy and assess the overall health of a company's balance sheet. Understanding corporate solvency is crucial for making sound investment decisions and managing risk effectively. Finally, we're going to be exploring some of the psychological influence influences on investment decision making. So behavioral economics examines how cognitive biases, emotions and social factors influence investors behavior and market outcomes. Psychological phenomena such as overconfidence, loss aversion and herd mentality can lead to irrational decision making and market inefficiencies. Understanding these uh, psychological influences helps investors recognize and mitigate behavioral biases, enabling them to make more rational and disciplined investment decisions. By incorporating insights from behavioral economics, investors can improve their risk management strategies and enhance long-term investment performance. So to conclude, risk management, financial decision-making, and stock valuation are integral components of economics and investment analysis. We employ quantitative methodologies, fundamental analysis techniques, and an understanding of psychological influences in order to navigate financial markets effectively and achieve 
investment objectives. So this is the wrap up for the week. I hope you found it useful and I look forward to seeing you all and working with you in class. Thank you.